In the first episode of this series, I wove together research about strategy and expertise to give a robust, demanding definition of what a strategy expert is. I then applied that definition to the specific context of the biomedical industry. Then I outlined the three areas one has to master in order to be a biomedical strategy expert. So in this article, I will cover the first of those three areas, mastering oneself. In the next two episodes, I'll cover mastering knowledge and mastering relationships. To steal the words of zoologist Desmond Morris, we humans are naked apes. The few million years since we shared an ancestor with chimps and bonobos haven't erased our hardwired instincts that evolved over eons. And the higher mental faculties that we've developed in the last quarter of a million years or so, whilst they're impressive, they are adaptations to a smaller, simpler world of hunter-gatherer tribes. In other words, we didn't evolve to allocate massive, complex resource sets across heterogeneous global markets that are being transformed by rapid social and technological change. Yet, that is what strategists in the biomedical business are asked to do. There are two traits of this evolved human psychology that are especially pertinent to being a strategy expert. The first is that we depend a lot on heuristics mental shortcuts that allow us to solve problems quickly and easily, but at a cost of some inaccuracy, some errors, some biases. When we try to be biomedical strategists, these evolution adaptations trip us up simply because these psychological subroutines weren't built for this job. The second trait is what Kahneman and Tversky called system one and system two thinking, but which has become known as fast and slow thinking. Fast thinking, which often depends on heuristics, is automatic, intuitive and largely unconscious. By contrast, slow thinking is controlled, deliberate and expensive of time and energy. Slow thinking can often overcome many of the limitations of heuristic dependent fast thinking when you're making strategy. But it is difficult and it is deceptive. Many researchers have shown that our thinking is most flawed when we think we are thinking slow, but we are simply unconscious of the dominant system one mental processes. Since strategizing is largely a mental process, mastering oneself in order to become a strategy expert means, in essence, mastering the ability to override system one, fast heuristic thinking, with system two, slow critical thinking. This is what I observe when I see strategy experts in action in pharma, medtech and related sectors. But the question is, how do they do that? It's an education to talk to strategy experts about their personal development. Their stories have many things in common, education, experience, mentoring. But many non-expert, merely competent professionals also have that same background. Strategy expertise seems to be less a function of experience and more function of how that experience is processed and learned from. Strategy experts, it seems, have learned to keep system two, slow thinking, in charge by making sense of their history, achievements and failures, better than those whose similar experience has only resulted in mere competence. So how do a special few manage to do this better than the majority? Well, the answer seems to depend on whether you are an introvert or an extrovert. Just as these two personality types gain their energy from others or from within, their thinking abilities seem also to have external or internal origins. Extroverts, for example, engage system two by sharing their experience with others, using questions and conversations to slow thinking down and to force thinking up from system one to system two. Introverts achieve the same result by various kinds of internal dialogue, frequently arguing with themselves or, like me, thinking by writing. In both cases, the end result is to overcome the weakness of fast thinking and heuristics by adding levels of critical, deliberate, slow thinking. I've seen this phenomenon many times in biomedical strategy experts. Frequently, in our business, we have more information than we can easily process. System 1 heuristics often help us by focusing on the most recent or salient information 
what Kahneman calls availability heuristics. But when you observe a genuine structure expert asking for more context or more comparative information, what you're seeing is the switching on of her system two, slow thinking, to look beyond the available information. Another example of fast thinking, which is very common in the biomedical industry, is the framing of strategic issues in terms of the disease or products, an example of Kahneman's anchoring heuristics. So when a biomedical strategy expert says, forget the condition and treatment for a moment, what does the patient need? This is his system two, slow thinking, pulling the issue away from its anchor in product orientation. But perhaps the most common and egregious examples of system one fast thinking in biomedical strategizing are the related practices of benchmarking, best practices and case studies. Often, these are indications of what Kahneman called the representativeness heuristic. It's quick and easy to make comparisons with firms in the same market or to want to emulate successful competitors. But these methods are based on tested assumptions that the comparator is representative of your strategic situation. And that assumption is often false. So when an expert strategist asks the question, in what way are our situations similar and dissimilar to them? They are replacing the fast representative heuristic with the more critical system two slow thinking mode. Self mastery isn't easy. It seems to be related to personality type, which psychologists characterize in terms of five opposing pairs of traits. So for example, a personality trait of low openness favors reliance on heuristics. Excessive agreeableness isn't compatible with asking critical questions. Too little conscientiousness deters the hard work of re-anchoring issues. And too much neuroticism tends to favor representativeness biases. Overall, expert strategists seem to be moderate and not extreme in their personalities. That moderation seems to make self-mastery easier. So if in the context of a biomedical strategy expert, self-mastery equates to the ability to override fast system one and to use slow system two, and this is personality dependent, then how might one know when one has mastered one's own mental processes? After all, none of us carry a red light on our heads indicating system two is enabled. This important question is especially pertinent since non-expert system one thinkers can, by wrapping themselves up in formal strategy processes, masquerade as systems two thinking strategy experts. You've probably seen strategy presentations that sound good, but actually have no substance. In my observations of biomedical strategy experts, their degree of self-mastery is indicated by five behavior patterns. The first of these is the way the strategy experts respond to new information. Self-mastery is revealed by interest, curiosity and self-confidence, but lack of it is shown by disinterest, criticism and defensiveness. The second is a habit of self-reflection. Self-mastery is usually shown by being aware of one's own thought processes and alert to their possible weaknesses. Lack of it is shown by being very confident of one's own decisions. The third indicator of self-mastery in a strategist is communication behaviour. Clarity in expression, listening skills and communicating to understand rather than to win an argument are all characteristics of someone who is self-mastered. Waffling and arguing to win suggests the opposite. A fourth habit is a tendency towards creative influence. Using system two thinking seems to allow expert strategists to draw meaning from information in a non-obvious way, such as identifying new opportunities and unforeseen threats. Those who lack self-mastery tend to think in a very linear way. Finally, self-mastery is often accompanied by compassion, empathy and humility. Arrogance and lack of respect are good indicators of self-mastery. So together, these five behavioural traits seem to flow from the self-assurance that is engendered by self-mastery, and together they can be used to assess one's own level of self-mastery and, and indeed that of others. And they have the great advantage, of course, that they are very difficult to fake consistently. 
what enables trifecta of mastering oneself, mastering information, and mastering relationships is a powerful and practical tool for thinking about strategy expertise in the biomedical sector. In this article, I've described how mastering oneself is largely about mastering one's own mental processes and establishing slow systems through thinking. Whether that is achieved and how it is achieved is strongly influenced by personality characteristics, such as the five big traits. This suggests that there may well be a personality type or types that make good strategists and others that do not, which seems intuitively correct. In any case, assessing one's own self-mastery and that of others is helped by five observable and hard to fake behaviour patterns. Exhibiting those behaviours is a good indicator that one has mastered oneself and made the first step towards being a genuine biomedical strategy expert. In the next article, I'll describe the second step of mastering knowledge.